I think black men's gripe is that we are taught as men in general, as black men in particular, that we need to compete for everything in life, particularly women. There's a dude out there who's taller, more handsome, has more money, more charismatic, the whole nine. Mm -hmm. I have to position myself in a way where I can attract the caliber of woman that I want. Mm -hmm. Adversely, uh, women, particularly black women, grow up in situations where they're taught, maybe overtly or covertly, that men have no value. Because I see no inherent value in manhood, I see no reason to have to compete. So he should want me just cause. And I think that's what leads to certain women having such bad attitudes, having such bad hygiene, having such bad, even like weight control. Because deep down, black men aren't worth competing for. Black men are our birthright. They are as good as how, how good they make us feel. He should love me however I come. And he should believe when I say, that I will magically be the best woman that he's ever had once he shows me dot, 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 dot. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel so aligned. I mean, I want to like have this conversation without placing blame. I want to be neutral. Um, and also without being so like individualistic, because obviously we know everyone's different. Um, I live in Atlanta, preface that. So I do understand how that could be a little bit of a factor, but I think that in my own experience, men my age, don't have that um, like internal drive to be in committed relationships, honestly. And I think factor that in with like social media, factor that in with external pressures, with them trying to get themselves together, this and that. It's dating is trash. You can't just blanket statement that. There are other things that go into that, but my experience hasn't been all that great. I'm not gonna lie. And I feel like I'm a pretty good dater. I feel like I have a good time, you know, and I feel like I ask the right questions and dating to get to the committed relationship stage is indeed trash. So what's your experience been so far? Um. I was talking to you a little bit about it. I found that a lot of men, I'm in my later 20s, um, what they say and what they do tends to be different. So where, where they'll approach and we'll go through the talking phase, what comes out of their mouth is, I wanna be in a committed relationship and you know, I wanna take things to the next level, this and that. But when they're actually face to face with the reality of it, it's like they run. And I don't know if that's, you know, trauma from past relationships or um, just the just them really wanting that talking phase. Because honestly, the talking phase is pretty chill. You know, there's really not much pressure. But um, yeah, it's it's a, a complete lack of, I guess, self awareness of okay, this person might be ready for something more. I'm not really willing to give that, but I'm also not really willing to say that that's not what I want for fear of that other party leaving or whatever. So, yeah, I don't know. And I feel like another thing is like, I don't think our generation is all that good of stating what their expectations are from the beginning. Like if you just want it to be sex or you just want it to be something casual or this and that, then just say that. And I think it also is different based on the caliber of person that you're dealing with. And this is men or women. I think that when men see a quality woman or when a woman sees a quality man, that they feel as though, oh, this person is serious. Like this person is somebody that I don't want to play with this and that. When faced with the commitment conversation, it could be kind of like 
a fear on the inside. Like I know that I can't perform and I know, or I know that I can't, um, live up to this person's expectations or I'm just not ready for a committed relationship. So I run, I ghost and ghosting is another whole nother conversation, or I do something to sabotage the situation. And so then you end up just having two confused people that went through, you know, whatever for however many months. And it's just like, okay, on to the next. So what's your, what's your theory so far? Like, as far as like, what's, what's your game plan to, (laughs) to, identify and and get what it is that you want. So maybe start there. What is it that you actually want? (laughs) And then how have you mapped out the path to getting there? Yeah. um, I can't say that I'm ready to be a wife, like this person today, ready to be a wife. But I can say, and I don't know if this is from just being tired of the talking phase or being tired of the singleness, which has a little bit of ego involved in it as well. But I can say that I am ready to be in a committed relationship. I'm ready to share my day-to-day life with somebody. How to get there, (laughs) um, I don't know, because obviously what I'm doing isn't working. So I can't say that, I can't sit here and be super confident, like, oh yeah, I'm amazing and everything that I'm doing is right, because you have to take some form of like self-accountability that obviously there's something in your process that's not working. I don't know. Like I've analyzed it. I'm like, am I just not choosing the right men? Am I not choosing the right age bracket? Cause I thought that's another thing too. I'm not really, I don't really attract older men. Like I don't attract men 35 plus. I don't know. I just don't. Um, I don't know if it's cause I look young or whatever, but, um, but I am very wise. So it's surprising that I don't, or maybe I do attract them, but they just, they're just older. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I don't know, maybe that's what it is. Um, but men, my age is are, I don't just don't know if they're, I don't just don't know if I don't want to say keep up with, because that puts a notion that I'm better than a man that might be 27 years old. But, um, Maybe I'll just have to give men my age grace that they're just not ready. And maybe I'm just not playing in the right bracket. Maybe. Because I sit here and I don't like the self-analyzation on a platform. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm not going to sit here and tell you what I bring to the table. Like, I don't like any of that stuff. But I will say that I look at the quality of my friendships. I look at the quality of my family. I look at the quality of the relationship I have maybe with coworkers or just people on a day-to-day basis. And I don't think anyone would say that it's toxic. I don't think anyone would say that I'm not a good person. I don't think anyone would say that um, I'm not a value add in their life. So I do have the confidence in saying, I do believe I would be a good partner. I say that with complete confidence. There's just something in the process that's not working. And um, I think if, if I were like a 70s or a 60s baby, I don't think it would be this difficult. I think it might just be the millennial generation. Because we were talking yesterday how like the 80s babies, I feel like they went through a lot of stuff, but the dating scene wasn't really all that confusing. Millennials, the dating thing is obviously confusing and we're kind of on the edge of, we knew what it was like before social media and we knew what it's like with it. And then Gen Z is like we were talking about, they just don't care. They're just like, whatever. So I think that millennials specifically have a very peculiar dating situation. So there's a lot of different factors. (laughs) Location, age, I don't know. What are your thoughts? I see. So let, let's let's do this. You ask me questions based on, you know, this whole dating thing. <laughs> and I'll give you my honest opinion on what's going on. And hopefully, you know, there's a, there's a young lady maybe also in Atlanta who's having the same issue mm-hmm. who can, you know what I'm saying, identify yeah. and get some value out of the conversation. I guess my first question for you would be, do you think dating is trash in your personal experience? Um, 
I think we are suffering from analysis paralysis. Yeah. I think we have way too many options. Um, not just options of ways to meet people, like online dating, social media, shit like that. Mm-hmm. But also the illusion of way too many options of people. Men and women. Yeah, men and women. And then also way too many options of like lifestyles too. And I think that's why it's so hard for men and women to decide what it is that they actually want. And if you're kind of wishy-washy about what it is that you actually want, your results tend to be kind of wishy-washy as well. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Sometimes I feel like why get into a relation like the the we know that being single is something that's pretty much manageable. People obviously have their individual um, situations, but being single is manageable because all you it, of course, if you don't have children or responsibilities and things like that, because all you really have to manage is yourself. Like I can come home, I can set the environment. No one is stepping on my toes, if that makes sense. The thought of bringing in another person, um, I feel like can be scary for us um, because it's challenging, you know, Um, and the the lifestyle thing that you mentioned, what like, what type of life? do we really want to be living that is going to dictate a successful long-term relationship? Like if we go with that, it's like, okay, can he, if he provides you this lavish lifestyle and that's the only metric or merit that you are basing this off of, is that sustainable? Does that make sense? Um, Hmm. I think I think what's complicated is that I really hope I'm wrong, but I, I don't think modern people want the same things that our parents or their their parents wanted. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like long term relationships, even our, our ideas of them are different. Mm-hmm. I agree. And that's why I think we're gonna have to kind of renegotiate what that means for us because honestly i think people are gonna even if people still get married they're gonna get married on average later in life they're gonna have less kids um marriages might not last as long um because again it goes back to we think there's so much more out there Mm -hmm. not just like other people but also other experiences and like locking yourself down um to marriage and i know we talk about some couples who are like travel bays and shit like that but like it for the vast majority of people that's not going to be their outcomes what do you think what experiences or lifestyles do you think that women our age are um idealizing travel, in relationships travel something travel you can do when you're one. single travel travel is a big one um i think the you know power couple dynamic is a big one Okay. Um, where they're both bosses and they're both, you know, working a bunch of, uh, you know, working a lot. Um, I think it could work in a less traditional setup. But if you're thinking about kids and things like that, um, there is going to have to be one of the two parents who prioritizes rearing the children while okay. the other one is a breadwinner. But I don't think people think all this stuff through. I think they just like how, you know, shit looks. I agree. I agree. Okay. What do you think of the soft girl life? So what is it like a the soft movement. girl life movement? Yes. For black women specifically. <laughs> oh. I don't I don't believe it. And I think a lot of dudes don't believe it. Kind of like I was telling you yesterday, like uh, I think we are focusing more on the aesthetic of things, just how shit looks, than what it actually means. So what soft girl life actually is supposed to mean is women embracing their femininity, women embracing their, um, you know, their softness, right? 
in a world that in a lot of ways forces them to be hard. Um, but when a lot of women I've seen, you know, talk about soft girl life, they're really talking about like <laughs> sugar babying, <laughs> the, the sugar baby lifestyle, the, the, uh, what's that girl? I want to be on the beach in Dubai. I want to, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I've been suffering. I suffered for 19 years. It's time for me to shake my ass on a yacht. Oh, oh, my God. God. In Dubai. In a phone. Oh, wow. They're not talking about like being a nurturer, learning how to cook, learning skincare, learning how to take care of your hair, uh, you know, learning conflict resolution, learning how to be the soft to a man's heart. Um, and that's why I think a lot of it falls flat on his face. And I, I think that's also why a lot of dudes don't um, don't don't believe it because that real softness takes practice. And you don't just like, you know how some girls will say, oh, if I meet a strong man, I'll know how to rest in my femininity. A lot of women don't have practice doing that. So like the idea that it took this TikTok hashtag for you to now want to be a woman. It's like, man, you don't even know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah. I don't know. I think that the the premise of it is, is positive. Um, but I think that that soft girl life, I think you have to conquer it in your singleness before you conquer it in a relationship. Because like you said, you can't expect, just because you're in a relationship, now you start being this soft girl. And what exactly does soft girl mean? Is it a lifestyle or is it just the way that you live your life in peace every day? I guess it looks different for different people. I know it looks different for me than maybe what it might look like on TikTok. You know, you're going around, you're traveling and blah, blah, blah. But um, I can see how people might view it as maybe like a cop out. Um, I can see how people might view it as this takes responsibility of the woman, it takes away the responsibility of a woman having to do anything, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, I am the table 2.0. That's really, that's, that's point, really though. it. That's really what it is. I don't know. Because don't know. At, at the core, I think black men's gripe is that we are taught as men in general, as black men in particular, that we need to compete for everything in life, particularly women. There's a dude out there who's taller, more handsome, has more money, more charismatic, the whole nine. Mm -hmm. I have to position myself in a way where I can attract the caliber of woman that I want. Mm -hmm. Adversely, uh, women, particularly black women, grow up in situations where they're taught maybe overtly or covertly that men have no value. Mm -hmm. You don't need a man. A man is as good as, you know, how well he can sex you and how much money he can give you. But mm -hmm. because I see no inherent value in manhood, I see no reason to have to compete. So he should want me just cause. And I think that's what leads to, um, you know, women, certain women having such bad attitudes, having such bad hygiene, having such bad, um, you know, um, even like weight control, because deep down, it's like black men aren't worth competing for. Black men are our birthright. And, you know, they are as good as how, how good they make us feel. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So like, he should love me at any size. He should love me however I come. And he should believe when I say that I will magically be the best woman that he's ever had once he shows me dot, 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 dot. That's real. But it's a value thing. Yeah. A part of me is like, I don't want for my fellow black women to feel as valuable as the presence of masculinity in their life. Like, I feel like that value to a point should be inherent. I feel like, well, let's, let's talk about the weight thing. Cause I do think that that's an issue within our community. And I feel like I want to work on my health and wellness. I want to live a healthy lifestyle because 
I value and I love myself, not so much because I want to be attractive to a man. I want to get chose. Yeah. You know? And so that's where it's kind of like, it's not hypocritical. It's just a little bit of dissonance because on one side, you're like, black women might need to get a little bit competitive. But then on the other side, it's like, where do black women um, learn to rest and to take care of themselves and allow for the good, the good things in life to be attracted to them, which in my opinion is a big factor of femininity. I think that we're very good at, or, okay, let me rephrase. I think that as long as we work on ourselves and we do work on our femininity and we work on becoming the highest version of ourselves, I think that everything that you want and you desire will be attracted to you. Call it woo woo, whatever, but I do believe that. And I think that a lot of women in other cultures get it. Um, and I find that we're the only ones that harp so much on like pick me's and we harp so much on, um, looking down on another woman just because like maybe they keep themselves up and they do like male attention. Um, I don't think it's really all that bad to enjoy male attention or enjoy when a man compliments you or to flirt, you know, or to be in the presence of men. I don't think that's bad, but for some reason, black women, we're the only ones that are like, well, you know, if you dress up or if you do this or that, then you are trying to be a pick me or you're trying to get male validation or this or that. Um, and I don't know. I think that does stem from our lack of resting in our feminine and even knowing what that looks like. Now, why I say that I think the soft life is a, is a positive movement um, even if it could be taken as fake or whatever is because I would have loved to see my, seen my mom live a soft life. And I think a lot of both black men and young black women would have loved to see their mothers live soft lives. Um, and why there has to be so much, I don't know, like, I personally, when I get on social media, I don't see black men being like, oh, this black girl talking about a soft life, whatever, whatever. But I have talked to men, you know, in my life and they're like, that is so annoying or this or that. But it's like, why? Why is that annoying to you all? Like, why wouldn't you want to be like, yes, sis, like live your soft life, this and that. Because it's not authentic. That, that's kind of what I was saying earlier. It's not authentic because most women, most women who are touting this and I... <laughs> Low key, I blame Nigerian women because the whole soft no, life Nigerian thing, it came, it came from Nigeria. Really? Interesting. So the whole soft life, you know what I'm saying? It came from Nigeria. I didn't know that. I could be, I, 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 I will leave myself open to be wrong. I was like, but I was hearing, I was hearing soft this, soft that, soft boy, soft, that comes, that's part of Nigerian slang. Now, Nigerian women are notorious for, um, you know, your handsomeness is what's in your hands. <laughs> a handsome man has something in his hands, mm. right? Like, Explain that more. Um, it's it's more about your status in our culture. It's more about your um, perceived economic value in our culture. And you know, if if you can't, um, if it's not clear that you're up to the task to take care of. Me and from the female point of view, that means funding my lifestyle. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a good dude. Like it starts with, can you, can you afford me? And that's one of my big critiques about our culture in Nigeria and, and our women. But um, I say all that to say a lot of what this soft life thing is now championing is stuff that the late Kevin Samuels was talking about. It's stuff that the Manosphere has been talking about. It's stuff that dudes have been talking about in their barbershop. But it was dismissed as misogynistic. It was dismissed as archaic. But now that it's repackaged under a TikTok and Instagram hashtag, it's like, now you want to listen. So from the perspective of the dudes who've been saying this for 20 years mm -hmm. or 10 years, who've been dealing with this in their real life, it's like, nah, it's a trend to you. You don't even understand what it is that men are actually saying. It's just now that it's popular, now that you're hearing a whole bunch of women say it, you're just on the soft life train, but you don't actually understand what it means. Because you'll see some women 
uh, for instance, that um, they are trying so hard to be to be soft. Mm -hmm. Like you can tell they're even like actively trying to make their voice less harsh. They're tr actively trying to be. Is that not what y'all have asked black women to do? Absolutely. But what we're asking is to make it sustainable. So that's where <laughs> self-reflection comes in. That's okay. where, you know, therapy comes in. Okay. That's where like reconciling the anger that is in a lot of our women. That's when that comes in because anything else, it's, it's, it's hanging on by a thread. Mm -hmm. And as soon as that do do something you don't like, you forget all the softness and you will go right back to being a no, uh, no limit soldier. So dudes, <laughs> we end up just kind of holding our breath like, ah, this ain't you. <laughs> this really ain't, this really ain't you. You feel what I'm saying? So we wanted a situation where women themselves were able to course correct. Women themselves were able to be reflective and, and introspective. And it didn't have to, uh, it didn't have to be inspired by a fucking TikTok hashtag. Okay. That's, that's all men are really saying. And that's why we're kind of hesitant to be like, okay. 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 A few things. I, I will say this la yes. last point about that. There's a difference between, and I've used this analogy before. There's a difference between a dude that keeps his space clean, his apartment clean, for instance, mm -hmm. because he thinks better and that's how he likes his place to be. Mm -hmm. versus a dude who keeps his apartment, who cleans up his apartment when he knows a girl is coming over. Okay. Because at some point... There might not be no girls coming over. No, no, not there might not be some girls coming over. At, at, after he's got her or whatever the case may be, he'll revert back. There's no need to perform anymore. I see. So that's not sustainable. So similarly, like, are you being soft as a means to an end? Or is that who you are? Mm-hmm. Well, one thing I will say, and I hate that we have to use social media as a metric, but I think that in a YouTube space, um, we don't know each other's lives. We don't know the individuals and people's lives. So we, that's social media is the only point of reference. I think that in, especially in like TikTok space, Instagram space with this soft life thing, um, people are creating this content, um, I feel like for themselves, you know, which does, you know, promote your point of, are y'all doing it authentically? What my fear is specifically in the Manosphere space, and this is no knock to the Manosphere, um, cause you know, I observe and I keep it moving. Um, but it's like, when is, it's not when is enough enough, because I think that the conversation is important. I think it's when are when what type of woman is enough like like at what point are like okay yes black women are working on themselves because in the manosphere space um they'll do reviews or do whatever and they'll do reviews on like the bottom of the barrel women and it's just like, that's might not be an accurate representation of how the average black woman is. And it scares me a little bit because it's going to continue to feed the negativity cycle. And I know we talked about this in the premise of, you know, this is entertainment, this or that, but like, I don't know, like if a woman is trying, actively trying to talk softer, to be a little bit more feminine, to do this or that, I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing. And maybe we do have to put things to the test, but I think that the, I don't know, like is, will the facade per se, could it potentially lead to habitual actions? Does that make sense? Like, and if a lot of women come and they see this content and they're like, oh, yes, I want to live a soft life as well. And I guess we should probably define what a soft life is. But if they do see women, women that might be traveling, women that might not be on the hustle and the grind, um, 
women that might take the time to get up in the morning and pray and to, and to meditate and to lollygag and do all the things that historically black women really have not been able to do. If they do look at this content, maybe something will click in their brains like, oh, I want to live that life too. And they start to live that life. Does that make sense? I understand what you're saying, but that's, again, that's not the point. Um, the point is like, men are saying women are fixating on the aesthetic. Okay. No. Uh, what, what did Bruce Lee say? Like, uh, Kung Fu is not a martial arts, it's a way of life. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, a lot of women are fixating on the aesthetic. So they're fixating okay. on the traveling. They're fixating on the yoga. They're fixating on the getting up and doing your nails and shit like that. As opposed to fixating on being in alignment with your natural energy. And that's what men are saying because a common misconception is that, um, you know, uh, the manosphere is, or, or, you know, spaces like that are basically, um, are setting a dangerous precedent um, for men's expectations of women. When, in a way that's true, I think some of it is confirmation bias, mm -hmm. um, but we also have to remember these men have mothers Okay. These men have sisters. These men come in contact with black females on a daily basis, whether it's the cashier at the grocery store, whether it's the waitress at the restaurant, whatever the case may be. So, like, why is it that a lot of these, um, even these, these videos that we're seeing, are so easily confirmed by so many men? I think it's because... <laughs> Number one, the gap between a good black woman and a shitty one, it's, it doesn't seem as wide. Like okay. women in general are a lot more accommodating, right? Like you hear women, for instance, say, just because my two friends are hoes doesn't mean I'm a hoe. And that happens. You'll see women who, for all intents and purposes, there's really no reason they should be friends other than like traveling and brunch and taking pictures yeah. and going to the club and, and, and shit like that. And men are saying... The reason why we're talking about the bottom of the barrel is because she, she's a lot closer to you as a good woman mm -hmm. than the bottom of the barrel dude is to me as a good man. Mm -hmm. So we must address it um, holistically. And unfortunately, as a man, it seems to be the case that I'm more likely to come in contact with a shitty black woman than a good one. Because even some of the good one masquerade as shitty ones, whether it's resting bitch face to protect themselves or whatever the case may be. Oh, or, or they're, my gosh. Or they're in a group of shitty ones. So again, it's hard to even tell y'all apart. Oh my god! And gosh. Nobody, nobody considers that <laughs> uh -huh. in the conversation that men are having. They just say, if you guys, you know, uh, uh, you know, stop complaining, for instance, mm -hmm. things would magically fix themselves. And dudes are saying, no, my mom's like that. I okay. grew up with that. My sister's like that. I grew up with that. Mm -hmm. So don't tell me it doesn't exist. Okay. I see. I see. And I hear you. Um, okay. The critiques don't end. Like, it's always going to be something else. And it's like, I know, I see why talking about the success stories don't gain as much attention. It, does go, it doesn't garner, garner as much money. But it's like, okay, I can't, don't do soft life. Soft life could come off as fake. Don't smile all the time. You don't wanna have a resting bitch face, so have a smile on your face all the time. Walk a certain way, talk a certain way. And it's just like, it keeps going and going and going. And coming from somebody that's outside of that, I'm not on YouTube or anything. I have a regular nine to five. I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm nothing like that. Um, it's just, it, I, it, it can get a little bit like uh, just a lot of information coming at you where it's like, okay, so who can I be? And even if I do present myself as one thing, will the critiques continue? And then you get into, okay, well, a white man ain't going ain't gonna to be doing all this. A man outside of my race isn't going to be doing all this. I'm saying this as a metaphor, right? What I'm about to say. But I can rest easier 
in the presence of maybe a non-black man because the need to perform and be all of these things isn't necessarily there. Now, of course, there are those challenges of, is this non-black man challenging you? Are they, are they dating you and pushing you to be the best version of yourself? Because one thing I will say, I do think that, and maybe I am just a little bit of an optimist, but I do believe that um, some men in the manosphere really do want to see black women thrive, you being one of them. So I can't, I'm not going to sit here and say, that your voice isn't, you know, um, very important, but interracial or like women going more towards non-black men, it could just be a little bit more easier. And I think that that is a mirror of what black men might feel as well dating non-black women. So it's, a, yeah, so non-black women. So it's just like, okay, should we start to evaluate and analyze the way that we're going about trying to fix the relationship between black men and black women? I think that's something that we definitely need to eventually talk about. Um, because at the end of the day, and I'm not trying to be a hippie here, but like that love and that positivity, in my opinion, should be the number one goal you know, and it, it can be that the, the manosphere and the feminist space can be very unloving. It can be very, a lot of resentment, a lot of disdain, just that energy that's just mustering up, you know? Um, and is it going to be towards our own detriment? And is everybody at the end of the day just going to be like, all right, we'll just date outside our race. Everything is fine. la di da di da But at the end of the day, I think a lot of black women don't want to date outside their race. They just don't. Black men, mm, we can have a combo about that. But black women, I don't think, I think the majority of them do not. The, but it's just, I don't know. All right, I'm done with my rant. I think you're giving them the benefit of the doubt, but 